AI is changing the world. How we work, how we use the internet, but even how we write code. But what does this really mean for us as software developers? Is AI here to replace us or will it redefine what it means to program altogether? Today I want to explore a radical idea. What if acceptance testing isn't just a way to verify software, but is really the best next step in evolution of how we program computers? Stick around, I think this might change how you think about coding forever. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe and if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. Let's start with this. Programming languages exist not because that's how computers understand the world, but as tools to help us think at the right level of detail. Programs are specifications of what we want our system to do. They often do this by defining in detail the steps that we think will achieve our goals. But really, the underlying message to the computer is something different. It's a definition of what we want the computer to achieve. Over the decades, programming languages have evolved to be clear, expressive and precise in doing this, making it easier for us to tell the machines what we want to do when we use them. This is distinct from natural human languages, which are much more ambiguous and so less useful as a tool with which to achieve precision when communicating, particularly with machines. It seems to me a fairly common mistake by all of us, technical or not, that we assume that the hard part of developing software is writing the code, where in reality, the hard part is being able to come up with a sufficiently detailed, accurate description of what we want so that a computer can do it, whatever it is that that takes. But now we have AI stepping into the picture and everyone thinks that the way forward is to adopt the woolly, imprecise, overly verbose natural language as the best means of achieving that precise description. Is this really the case? With tools like ChatGPT or Copilot, the process of software development certainly feels very different. You describe what you want and the AI generates code to do it. Sounds magical, right? But fundamentally, this is still just programming. Your prompt is the program, and the AI acts as an incredibly advanced compiler, taking what you specify and ultimately changing that into executable code. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, Honeycomb, and Rad Studio. Transfic is a fintech company applying advanced continuous delivery techniques to deliver low latency trade routing services to some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. All of these companies offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, please do click on the links in the description below and check them out. It's through their support that we can keep this channel going. So please do check them out and say thanks to them. Programming at its core is about three things. Understanding the problem well enough to explain it clearly. Translating that explanation into something that a computer can execute. And verifying that what we've built actually works and addresses the problem that we started out with. These principles don't change when we're using AI, but the mechanism of going from the description to the executable thing does. Instead of coding line by line, we now collaborate with an AI, and while the AI can handle some of the grunt work, it still leaves the hardest, most creative parts to us, really. That is, defining the problem in precise, unambiguous terms. There's a challenge, though, and it's a big one. Reproducibility. Traditional programming is deterministic. If you write the same code and run it twice, you expect to see the same results each time. A compiler is a program too, so if I write some code and compile it twice, I expect to get the same result, the same program each time. But with AI code generation, not so much really. The output can change based on the model randomness settings or even the updates to the AI itself. So how do we address all of this variation? There are two questions here for us to answer. 
How can we specify what we want with enough clarity and enough detail that the AI is going to get it right? And how can we verify that we and the AI did in fact get it right? That the code works, even after changes to the AI or to our requirements for the system. This brings me to the role of acceptance testing in this. For years, I've used automated acceptance tests in the form of executable specifications as tools to describe from a user's perspective exactly how a system should behave. They're clear, easy to write, and when we get the level of abstraction right, precise and reproducible, which makes them perfect for solving both of these challenges that programming with AI presents to us. Imagine this. Instead of writing code, we write these detailed specifications. Each one tells the AI what the system should do in a specific scenario. The AI handles the implementation and generates the detail of the tests that we need to verify our specifications. Now we can write the code more easily by having an accurate way to specify what it is that we actually want to achieve. And we can verify its work by running the tests. This isn't just testing, it's programming at a higher level of abstraction. Let's break this down. Acceptance testing solves ambiguity. Programming languages are great because they're precise. By treating tests as specifications, we give the AI unambiguous instructions. It also ensures reproducibility. Even if the AI changes the underlying implementation, the tests act as a safeguard to verify that the second version of the implementation works in the same way as the first. They confirm that the system still behaves the way that we want. This approach shifts programming from writing solutions to specifying behavior. It's like the leap from assembly language to a high level language. It represents a new level of abstraction that allows us to focus on what we really want from the system, not on the mechanics of how we achieve it. Is this idea of raising the level of abstraction for programming really new though? Well, no. The idea really represents the whole history of programming. But the next step in abstraction has, until now at least, always been somewhat problematic. Techniques like model-driven development and low-code platforms have tried hard to raise the level of abstraction for programming and sometimes work quite well for some narrowly constrained problems, but they've struggled as general solutions to programming, particularly with issues like maintainability, flexibility and reproducibility being left unresolved. Acceptance testing, however, is different it's practical. It already works extremely well for human programmers who are part of the translation process in modern software development as it stands, even though not all of them currently use acceptance testing. This means that it integrates seamlessly into a modern development workflow. I think that our current position of being at the dawn of AI programming makes it a very good time to rethink programming itself. And to do that, it makes sense to me to focus on the problem that we're really trying to solve with programming, that of specifying what we want the computer to achieve, rather than focus on the mechanism that we're currently going to use to specify that. What if the specifications, the acceptance tests, were the program? What if our job as developers shifted from writing a solution to more clearly specifying the problem that we want solved? And so, writing these detailed executable examples and letting AI handle everything else. It's not just an idea. It might be the next step in the evolution of our profession as software engineers. So I thought that I'd give it a try to see how close I could get to making this work now with the current generations of AI systems. And actually, we were rather closer than I thought we were. I started with OpenAI's 4.0 model and did pretty well but it took me a while to prompt it so that it, the result was a working Flask application. So I switched over to the more capable O1 model. In both cases, I began explaining the idea of programming using acceptance tests. I actually used the script for this video and fed it in to explain what I was trying to recommend. Then I described my preferred four layer model of acceptance testing to the AI in both cases, they were rather eager to rush ahead and write all of the code, tests and code. And certainly O1 did pretty well at that. But my aim was a bit different. I wanted to program the AI with acceptance tests. 
So I worked to get a structure in place for a single test. And then I added another test and got the AI to implement the code to make both of the tests pass. It worked surprisingly well. Here are my tests. The AI assistants generated some of these initially, but I reworked them a reasonable amount to make them a bit clearer and to be a better fit with my preferred style for writing acceptance tests. The AI though generated all of the actual code. I shaped the tests, but merely cut and pasted the code that the AI generated into my IDE while I was working with it. I was consciously trying to avoid changing the application as far as I could. I did make a few minor corrections when the code wouldn't run, but it was, this was mostly due to my configuration being slightly different to what the AI assumed in my development environment. When I did change the code, rather than the tests, as far as I could, I did it by prompting ChatGPT and barely touched the non-test code myself. There are, as a result, still some gaps here. Stuff that I would generally strongly recommend for acceptance tests that I haven't done here, like functional and temporal isolation, that I describe in a bit more detail in this video, and that I cover in much more extensively in my acceptance test driven development training courses. This means that these tests are a little more untidy than I would usually prefer, and a little more fragile too as a result. But this exercise wasn't really about that. It was meant to be an experiment, and so I didn't spend lots of time making it production level test code. One of the interesting side effects of this experiment that I think is common to many experienced programmers when using AI, is that although being very impressed with how well O1 in particular was doing at times, I still believe that I spent more time writing the code with the AI than I would if I'd written it on my own from scratch. Now this may just be misplaced optimism on my part, but I certainly spent a few hours of fiddling with the code and with prompts to the AI to achieve the result that I ended up with and that I wanted. But I do know that I could have achieved something very similar in similar timescales because I've written code like this many times before. I'm also convinced that I would be more satisfied with the result than I am with this code if I'd written it myself. I spent a fair amount of time correcting mistakes that I'm certain that I wouldn't have introduced in the tests and the test infrastructure. I am though pretty convinced that given some better prompting of the AI, I could do this a lot more quickly in future. There were certainly times when the AI sped things up for me but also times when it wrote code that I wasn't satisfied with. And those times it reminded me of tinkering with tidying legacy code more than anything else. Too often it generated code that didn't work at all. Although it was close enough to what I was looking for to make me press on and correct it rather than rewrite it from scratch. But at times it made bigger mistakes, missing things out that should have been there. For example, it generated a REST API web-based application but generated a test and test infrastructure for an application with a web UI. They simply didn't work together, they weren't compatible, until I worked to fix them, that is. Some with prompting, some with editing the code. However, the target of this exercise to get the AI to generate code from an executable specification certainly worked at some level. Once I got past these teething troubles anyway. And I'm pretty sure that given more time and more refinement of the techniques, maybe better prompts of what I wanted, this is a viable strategy for raising the level of abstraction in programming in a way that simultaneously allows us to accurately define what we want the code to do and then confirm that the code has done what we wanted it to. The part that I'm less sure of, with the, at least with the current generation of AI assistants, is how well this will work without the very strong sense of guidance to do the right things uh, that I applied as an experienced programmer. But I will try this again when I have more time. I'd like to more reliably be able to get the AI to, when given an executable specification, to generate the test infrastructure to support the test and the code to make that test pass with a bit less help from me to do so. If it can do that though, then this would genuinely be a working model for programming more effectively with artificial intelligence. I saw O1 do both these things. In fact, all of the things that are necessary to make this stuff work, 
but with a lot of virtual handholding on my, and coaching on my part to guide it in the direction that I wanted it to go. If this is to really work, we'd also need to solve a very hard problem, the problem of how to prevent the AI from cheating the tests, which it may well do. This is not at all an easy problem to solve, but we will have that same problem in some form, however we specify what it is that we want to the AI. If this concept resonates with you at all, do let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on how AI is going to reshape our field. And if you're curious about acceptance testing, do check out my free tutorial linked below and explore my self-study course on BDD and ATDD. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoy what we're doing here, please consider joining our Patreon community. Your support helps us to keep exploring ideas like these. So see you next time and thanks to our existing patrons. Bye bye.